Hello and welcome to this April 6 feature video tutorial. In this video you will learn how to create and use your own correlations to calculate and update the values of April's attributes during simulation. To demonstrate the use of your own self-made correlations, we create a correlation to calculate the value of critical heat flux through a pipe wall at each time step. To create our own correlation to calculate the critical heat flux through a pipe wall, we will use shared libraries, APERS user components and user component SCL scripts. Shared libraries can be used to manage, share and transfer user components between your projects and the members of your modeling team. User components on the other hand are reusable structures composed of basic APERS modules that you can tailor for your own modeling needs. And inside the APERS user component you can create your own SCI script to define the logic or calculation inside the user component. In this tutorial we will use the user component SCI script to calculate the critical heat flux through a pipe wall according to the KISE-1 correlation. And finally we use APERS charge to visualize our simulation results. In this example, we have a simple heat pipe and a flow of water and steam through the pipe. The pipe is 7 meters long and it's divided to 50 calculation nodes. These points and this pipe that are marked with a red rectangle are out of simulation, so they are used as a boundary condition. This lower point is 0.2 meters below the reference level, where the pressure is 53 bars, while this upper point is 7.2 meters above the reference level where the pressure is 50.2 bars. And as you can see, we use the 6 equation model to calculate the flow through the pipe. In this experiment we gradually increase the heating power of the pipe wall so that the water flowing inside this pipe starts to boil. And as we continue increasing the heating power, we eventually reach a condition called critical heat flux which results in a sharp decrease in heat transfer through the pipe wall and a sharp increase in the wall temperature. In APROS there are several built-in correlations that can be used to calculate the critical heat flux. The critical heat flux correlation is selected by giving the number of the correlation in this property view tab. Value 1, for example, selects a combination of Biasi and Zuber Griffith correlations while value 2 can be used to select the smalling correlation. You can use the IPROS help to find the correlation number. Here we are going to give value 0 for the critical heat transfer correlation, which means that the critical heat flux is given as an input value to the heat transfer modules created by the pipe. You can find the heat transfer modules under the name of the component in the model browser. Here we have 50 heat transfer modules, because the pipe is divided to 50 calculation nodes. And if we select one heat transfer module, you can find the value of the critical heat flux here. And in this tutorial we create our own correlation to update the value of this critical heat flux at each time step. Let's begin by adding a shared library in our model. Shared libraries are quite handy if you want to use your user components in different projects or you want to share user components with other users. Shared library is created by selecting a file, new, and APR shared library. And in the window that opens, you can give the name of the shared library. Our library is called correlations. Next we are going to add a new user component in the library by right-clicking the name of the shared library and selecting New User Component. Then, for this new user component, we add a new SCI script by right-clicking the user component and selecting New SCI script. Then we rename our user component, User Component Symbol and User Component SCI script. We also have to link the model to use the shared library. This can be done by clicking the name of the model and selecting your shared library under the shared libraries tab. Now the user components that are inside the shared library can be used in the model. 
The next step is to configure the user component terminals. The user component terminals are like any terminals in APROS modules, so they function as an interface between the user component and other APROS modules. The input data to the user component is given through the input terminals, then our user component calculates the critical heat flux by using the input data, and the calculation result is transferred to other APROS modules through the output terminal. To create the user component terminals, we open the configuration of the user component. Then we select the symbols view and add two other modules to the diagram. And then we connect the other modules. Then we are going to create as many reference flags from the address input signal terminals as there are input parameters in our correlation. Our critical heat flux correlation requires seven input parameters, so we are going to create seven reference flags for input. We also need a reference flag for the output, so we create a reference flag from the adder module output terminal. Then we select all these reference flags, right click one of them, and select create terminal. Now that the terminals are created, we no longer need these other modules, so we can delete them. We could have used also other modules than these others to create the terminals. Then if you want, you can use the diagram tools to align the reference flags. Now if we open the user components terminal folder, we can see that the terminals have been added in the folder. The next step is to rename these terminals. The input parameters for our critical heat flux correlation are steam saturation enthalpy, liquid saturation enthalpy, mixture enthalpy, pressure, mass flow, hydraulic diameter, and flow area. The name of the output terminal is going to be critical heat flux. Now that we have defined the user component terminals, it's time to edit the user component symbol. When you open the user component symbol editor, you can see that there is already a default component that we can use. Let's edit the symbol by adding the terminals we just created to the user component. The input terminals are green and the output terminal is red. When we have added the terminals, the symbol is ready. Now the symbol must be added in a symbol group, so the symbol can be used in our model. This can be done by right-clicking the symbol name in the user components folder, and then clicking assign symbol group. In the dialog that opens, we create a new symbol group called correlations. Now if we open the symbols tab, we can see that there is a symbol group called correlations, and under that symbol group we can find our user component. The next step is to create the user component SCA script. The script is used to calculate the user component output value based on the input parameter values. And in this case, the script is used to calculate the critical heat flux based on steam and liquid saturation enthalpy, mixture enthalpy, pressure, mass flow, hydraulic diameter, and flow area. To create the script, we open the script editor by double-clicking the script entry in the model browser. By default, the script is executed at each time step, and this is OK because we want that the critical heat flux is updated at each time step. Let's begin writing the script by assigning values to the variables that are needed to calculate the critical heat flux. The input data that is given to the user component can be accessed by writing the terminal name, then dot, and then analog value. For example, steam saturation enthalpy that is given as an input to the user component can be accessed by writing steam saturation enthalpy dot analog value. You may also want to write some help variables that make the script a bit easier to read. And finally, when we have calculated the value of the output variable, we give the result to the user component output terminal. 
This can be done by using syntax set dot output terminal name dot analog value and then the calculated value as we have done here. Our user component is now ready and it's time to publish it. Publishing means that the user component is set to read-only mode and the configuration of the published version cannot be modified anymore. If the user component needs to be improved, you have to create a new version of the same user component type instead of modifying the original one. When the user component is published, it can be exported and shared with other modelers. To publish the user component, we right-click the user component name and then click Finish for publishing. After this, a small lock icon appears next to the user component icon to indicate that the user component has been published. And if we open the configuration of the user component, we can see that the background of the diagram is grey, which means that the diagram is in read-only state. We also want to publish our shared library so that we are able to export it. This can be done by right-clicking the shared library name and then clicking Finish for publishing. The shared library is now published and this is indicated with a small log icon that appears on the shared library symbol. Now we are ready to add the user component in the model, so let's open the symbols tab and drag and drop the user component to the diagram. We are also going to need value transmitters to transfer data between calculation level modules and the user component. Value transmitters can be found under the symbol group BC transmitters. We are going to add as many value transmitters as there are input and output terminals in the user component and connect the value transmitters to the user component. When we have connected the value transmitters to the user component, it's time to add calculation level modules to the diagram and connect them to the value transmitters. The calculation level modules can be found by using the model browser. We are looking for the heat pipe calculation level modules, so we click the name of the heat pipe. The first four input parameters for our user component are liquid and steam saturation enthalpies, mixture enthalpy and pressure. These are calculated in a node calculation level module, so we are going to add a node calculation level module to the diagram. The rest of the input parameters are flow area, mass flow, and hydraulic diameter, and these can be found in a branch calculation level module, so we are going to add a branch calculation level module to the diagram and connect the calculation level modules to the value transmitters. You can check that you have connected the right calculation level module to the right input terminal by pointing the terminal symbol and pressing the control key. The name of the terminal appears in the lower left corner of the window. We also have to add a heat transfer module to the diagram because this is the module where the critical heat flux is given. Now that we have added the calculation level modules to the diagram, we must modify the value transmitters so that they refer to the right attribute in the calculation level module. The first value transmitter is connected to the user component liquid saturation enthalpy terminal, so we select the liquid saturation enthalpy as the input component's referenced attribute. And again, you can check the user component terminal name by pointing the terminal symbol and pressing the control button. And we are going to do this for each value transmitter. For this last value transmitter, we select the critical heat flux as the output component's referenced attribute. Now the critical heat flux that is calculated in the user component will be transferred to the heat transfer module, and the value of the critical heat flux will be updated at each time step. As you may remember, the heat pipe for which we calculate the critical heat flux is divided to 50 axia nodes, but at this point we have a critical heat flux calculation for one node only. If we want to add the calculation of critical heat flux to other nodes too, 
we must copy and paste the user component and value transmitters and connect them to the rest of the nodes. To copy the user component and the value transmitters, we select them and press Ctrl-C to copy and Ctrl-V to paste. Then we add a heat transfer module, a node module and a branch module and connect them to the value transmitters as we did earlier. However, we don't have to modify the value transmitters anymore. Then we just repeat this for each node for which we want to calculate the critical heat flux. Before we test the critical heat flux calculation, let's create a couple of charge to visualize the simulation results. We are going to create charge for the pipe inner wall temperature and for the total and critical heat flux. A new chart is created by right-clicking the charge folder in the model browser and then selecting new chart. Then we rename the chart as wall temperature. Then we create a second chart and rename it as heat flux. The wall temperature is calculated in heat structure nodes. Nodes 1 to 50 are for the wall inner surface and nodes 51 to 100 are for the outer surface. Let's take for example node 40 that is about 5.5 meters above the reference level. You can track and drop the node temperature to add it in the chart. Then we open the corresponding heat transfer module and add the total heat flux and critical heat flux to the chart. For the heat flux chart, we set a single axis. This can be done by right-clicking the chart name and selecting properties. In the dialog that opens, we select single from the combo box next to the axis mode label and click apply and OK. Then we move the charts by dragging them so that we can see both charts at the same time when we start the simulation. We also want to make sure that the number of the critical heat flux correlation is set to zero so that the critical heat flux is updated by the user component. We are now ready to start the simulation. To run the simulation, we use an SCS script in which we gradually increase the heating power of the pipe wall. And as we can see in this left chart, the total heat flux increases and the critical heat flux decreases as we increase the pipe wall heating power. And when the total heat flux reaches the critical heat flux, the pipe wall temperature increases sharply due to sudden decrease in heat transfer, as we can see in this chart in the right. And this was all today about how to use your self-made correlations in APERS modeling. Thank you for watching.